Hi, this is lesson 1.4, solving absolute value equations. You should be on page 28. In this lesson, you will learn how to solve absolute value equations. You will learn how to solve apps, how to solve equations involving two absolute values, and you'll learn to identify special solutions of absolute value equations. So again, this is saying these don't always work out to a convenient, nice one answer. An absolute value equation is an equation that contains an absolute value expression. So if you have an equation with an absolute value in it, that's called an absolute value equation. There are certain properties that absolute values have. The first one I know we know. If you take the absolute value of a number, it always will get you a positive or it will keep the number positive or if the number is zero, it will keep it zero. Absolute values always create positives or at minimum zero. This is saying if we had one absolute value of a negative amount, it would equal the absolute value of its positive. Like for example, this statement would say the absolute value of negative 5 would be the same thing as the absolute value of 5. They would both equal each other 5. This one um, is saying that if we have the absolute value of two numbers multiplied, we could break them up into separate absolute values, multiply, and get the same answer. And then similarly with division, it works in that way too. I would say the most important one on this list is here. If we get this, the other stuff falls together. Now, solving absolute value equations. To solve an absolute value equation like in this form, the absolute value of AX plus B equals C when C is greater than zero. In other words, I can't have negatives here. Solve the related linear equations. This is telling you that when you have absolute value equations, you're going to end up solving two separate equations. One where C is positive, one where C is negative. If C happens to be less than zero, that absolute value equation would have no solution to it because the absolute value always indicates a number that is not negative. So when I read through that, like I'm the teacher, and reading through that, that's not an easy read, and you might be thinking, I don't have a clue what you just said. Okay? So let's break it down and, and talk about what we just talked about here and try to make it simple. Let's start with something really easy. Let's solve this equation. The absolute value of x equals 3. Okay, let's think about this. This is saying that the number I put in here has to be 3 units away from 0. So here is 0 on a number line. Let me mark that in, let's mark it in a color. Let's say I mark it in, so here's 0, okay? What numbers would be 3 away from 0? And I hope that you're thinking right away, well, I know the number 3 would be 3 away from 0, but so would negative 3. Those are both 3 away from 0. You can see that here, okay? Well, that means that this problem has two answers. I could put 3 in for x, or I could put negative 3 in for x. Absolute value equations typically have two solutions. Now, let me show you that on paper. So that's, this is what's going on here. This is saying x should equal 3. You see how c has a positive or x could equal negative 3. There's going to be two solutions to the problem. Typically, absolute value problems have two solutions. Okay, so let's see samples of that. Let's do this sample together right here. So I have the absolute value of x minus 4 equals 6. Now, according to this in yellow, I should be able to write out two equations. x minus 4 should equal 6 or x minus 4 should equal negative 6. Now remember, from my previous slide, can you see how when I have an absolute value, I'll have two numbers that are a certain distance away from my response, which is going on here. I'm looking for the two numbers that are 
um, six units away, basically. So let's solve these. I'm going to, for this one, I'll add 4 to each side. So this is saying x equals 10. And over here, if I add 4 to each side, this is saying x equals negative 2. Okay? So let me just go to a number line because it says graph the solutions if possible. My solutions are 10 and negative 2. So going to my graph paper, here's 10, here's negative 2, and you notice that both of those are 6 units away from the number 4. Here's 6 away, and there's 6 away. So that's where the equation x minus 4 in absolute values equals 6. So 4 is the number that we're looking at, and we're looking for the solution 6 away, and we found two of them, 10 and negative 2. Hopefully this is helping you understand what an absolute value equation is doing. It typically gives you two solutions. Now let's look at this question. Absolute value of 3x plus 1 equals negative 5. Absolute values, if you have an absolute value and it's equaling a negative, that's when you have no solution. Think about it. Can I put a number in here for x and work this out and take the absolute value and have it give me a negative? And remember, the first rule up here, it's off my screen, but that first rule I went through said absolute values have to give you positives. So I can't get this to work out to a negative. This problem would definitely have no solution. Quickly pause the video, and I want you, you to try these three questions real quick. Okay, I'm back. And here are the answers. Why don't you pause the video and look over these and make sure it's matching what you have. Okay, next, let's talk about solving an absolute value equation. Now, there's an important note here that I would definitely get in your notes. When you solve an absolute value equation, you have to isolate the absolute value first. So this gets us back to this onion discussion I had with you in a prior video. Let's do this question together. So I'm going to draw my onion. The absolute value is the center of the onion. The minus 10 is the outside layer. I have to get rid of minus 10 first. I've got to get the absolute value by itself. So add 10 to the left, add 10 to the right and you get absolute value 3x plus 9 equals 6. Now, this is exactly like the problems that we just talked about. Okay? I have to write two equations. 3x plus 9 could equal positive 6, or 3x plus 9 could equal negative 6, and I have to solve both of those. And you can see um, they're doing that here in the book, too. So take away the 9. 3x equals negative 3, and I can divide by 3, x would equal negative 1, or if I take away 9 here, I'm getting 3x equals negative 15, and I can divide by 3, and x equals negative 5. And of course, you can always check your answers, and you're going to find out here quickly in this video, you have to check on absolute values, so you should plug these in and make sure they work. Let's talk about writing an absolute value equation from a word problem. It says, in a cheerleading competition, the minimum length of a routine is four minutes. The maximum length of a routine is five minutes. Now, if you look below, you'll see on a number line, they're marking, here's four minutes, here's five minutes. Write an absolute value equation that represents the minimum and maximum length. So, Okay, my minimum length is 4, and the maximum length, they said, is 5. Well, if this is the minimum, 4, and the maximum routine is 5, optimally, I'd want to be in the middle. I'd want my cheerleaders to have the middle time. I'd want them right here in the middle at 4 and a half. So if I was coaching the team, I'd say, we want our routine to be 4 and a half minutes. That gives us a half-minute leeway either way. So how do you write an equation for that? Okay? It's an example of it's right here. I'm going to take the absolute value of x minus 4 and a half. Now, where does the 4 and a half come from? 
That's the time I want. You notice I can be off a half minute either way, a half minute. That's my margin of error. Absolute value is similar to margin of error. So I want my routine to be four and a half minutes, but we can be a half minute off. Well, if we solve this, it will show you the minimum and maximum time. Okay, let me do that real quick. So x minus four and a half would equal positive half or x minus four and a half would equal negative half. If I add four and a half to each side, here I get x equals five. That is the top time we said. Okay. And here if I add four and a half to each side, I'm getting x equals four. So I did write an equation. This equation represents this situation. Okay, pause the video here and you try these questions. Okay, I'm back. You tried these and here is a page that has the answers to four, five, six, and seven. Now one thing I'm going to make clear on, you can pause the video and check these over yourself to match, see if it matches what you have. But remember, you must isolate the absolute value first. So you got to think onion. I'm highlighting the absolute values. You notice all the work I'm doing, I'm treating what's in pink like the center of the onion. I got to peel away one layer at a time. Next, if you are solving equations with two absolute values, so if the absolute values of two algebraic expressions are equal, then they must either be equal to each other or be opposites of each other. Now remember, opposites mean the negative. So you can see that here in the next part. To solve equations like this, this is what you need to do then. To solve an equation of this kind, you need to write two equations. One with these being positive. The second equation, you notice, you take one of the sides and make it opposite. You can see that here. Okay? So here would be an example. Let's take this problem. You notice they write two equations. They write one equation with both being positive. The second equation, you notice, they take one of the sides and make it opposite. They made the x opposite in the other equation. So these would be the two equations. Now to solve them should be pretty basic. Um, we're going to get all the x's on one side first, so you can see they're taking away x from each side, which gives you 2x minus 4 equals 0. Then they're going to add 4 to each side, 2x equals 4, divide by 2, there's one answer. Here, same work, we've got to get all the x's on one side, so they're adding x to each side, 4x minus 4 equals 0. Then they add 4, 4x equals 4, divide each side by 4x equals 1. There's two solutions, 2 and 1 and we ought to check them. For the other question, um, you can see they write, for this one, they write again two equations. The first equation, they have 4x minus 10 and 2 times 3x plus 1. In the second equation, I don't 100 percent, uh, this is correct, I guess I would have wrote a different, I would have wrote 4x minus 10 equals negative 2 parentheses 3x plus 1 but I guess it's getting the same, you're going to get the same thing. And then again, they solve those. So if you have two absolute values equal, we have to write two equations, one with both of them positive, and then the second equation, we keep one positive, the second absolute value we treat as an opposite. So again, why don't you try that concept here? Pause the video and try those. Okay, I'm back, and you tried these, and again, here are the answers. So the problem on the left, number eight, you can see my work here. So I had my first equation with both positive. The second equation, I made my other absolute value negative and worked them out. And then the same thing here. Here's my work with both positive and number nine. And then on my second equation, I changed three to its opposite distributed, and there are my two answers here for nine. And I checked them both to make sure that they both worked in each case, which you should be doing too. Last part of the video here, identifying special solutions. Now, whenever you have absolute values in a problem, it is possible for a solution to be extraneous. 
an extraneous solution is a, an apparent solution that must be rejected because it does not satisfy the original equation. In other words, it's a solution that when you work it out, you did all your work right, but when you plug it in, it doesn't actually work. So it's not your fault. You're, do, you're doing all your step work right. It just doesn't actually work. Okay? Here would be an example of an extraneous solution. Take this question. Okay? So we have an absolute value equaling 4x. So again, we're going to have two equations. The absolute value could equal positive 4x, or the absolute value could equal negative 4x. So if I solve here, I can quickly take away 2x from each side, get all the variables on one side, which gives me 2x equals 12, divide by 2, you see how I get 6. Okay, now if I plug 6 in, 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 plus 12 is 24, and over here, 4 times 6 is 24, those equal. Now let's solve the second equation. Take away the 2x, get all the variables on one side, and I get 12 equals 6, negative 6x, divide by negative 6, and I'm getting negative 2. Let's check that one. If you put negative 2 in here, you get 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 12 is positive 8. This side works out to the absolute value of 8. On this side, you get 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Can the absolute value of negative 8 equal... I misspoke. Can the absolute value of positive 8, I meant to say, equal negative 8? And I hope you know, you're saying that doesn't make any sense. If I take the absolute value of 8, there's no way I can get negative 8 out of that. Okay? So this would be called an extraneous solution. There's only one solution to this problem. It would be 6. We have to reject negative 2. It's extraneous. Okay? Whenever you solve equations of the form absolute value equals absolute value, it's possible that one of the related equations will not have a solution. Okay? So we've got to be careful with absolute value problems in that way. Um, they show an example here where we have absolute value equaling absolute value. So we just talked about those in the previous slide. We've got to make one equation positive, one equation negative. So here, they started off with the negative example. Here's x plus 5, and we have the opposite of absolute value x plus 11. We drop the absolute value. So you can see they're distributing through, which gets us to here. Get all the variables on one side. They're adding x to each side. Um, 2x plus 5 equals negative 11. Take away the 5. 2x equals negative 16. Divide by 2. x is negative 8. Now, if I check that, I'm getting negative 8 plus 5 here, which is the absolute value of negative 3. That's positive 3. And if I plug in negative 8 here, negative 8 plus 11 is positive 3. Positive 3 equals positive 3. We're good there. That's, that's correct. Now, the second example, we keep both of these positive and work them out. I'm going to take away x from each side, and I get 5 equals 11, and that's not making any sense. And he, they ended up, I don't agree with the book, they didn't move the variable to each side first. But anyway, we're getting 5 on the left, 11 on the right. That's not true. So that's a false statement. So this problem only has one solution. Okay? So you always have to check. Whenever there's an absolute value problem, you have to check it because you could get these extraneous solutions. And I know that's inconvenient because most of you are like me. I don't always check my answers. If, I, if it seems right, I'll take it. But with absolute value problems, you must always check your solution to make sure it's not extraneous. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.